In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You're advised that any views expressed by the hosts or their guests are not necessarily the views of Tuggy Entertainment or its partners. It's time to go beyond being plugged in. It's time to be linked in. It's the LinkedIn Lady Show on the Rockstar Radio Network. The LinkedIn Lady Show with Carol McManus is designed to inform us, inspire us, and educate businesses, entrepreneurs, and individuals on the specific uses of social media for growing our businesses. Every social media site has a specific demographic, personality, and purpose. And that's what we'll learn about today. The LinkedIn Lady will interview a variety of guests, business owners who will showcase their businesses, and talk about how they use social media to stay in touch with customers and to attract new relationships that will become customers. She'll also have other guests who will be experts in social media who will speak to the use of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Plaxo, Squidoo, and of course, LinkedIn. And as trends change and new applications become available, you'll hear about them here first. It's the LinkedIn Lady Show on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Carol McManus. Well, hello, hello, everyone. This is Carol McManus, the host of the LinkedIn Lady Show. I am so glad you are with us today. Uh, it is the end of the week, and, uh, you know, at the end of the week, I just always continue to shake my head because there are so many things happening every day in the world of social media, digital communications, uh, sites come, sites go, uh, techniques evolve and change, uh, but one of the things that I find uh, somewhat reassuring in this crazy world is that there are some fundamentals uh, about this business uh, that that do not change, and it all comes down to the fact that at the end of the day, even though digital uh, technologies have changed the way we communicate with our customers and clients and referral partners, the fact of the matter is it's still all about marketing. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today, um, particularly um, marketing versus advertising, which is still misunderstood by many. We're going to have some fun with that my guest, with my guest. But let me start by introducing him to you. He's actually not uh, new to the LinkedIn Lady Show. He has been on before, but he has been so busy I haven't had him on in a while, so I'm thrilled to have him back again. His name is Steve Olinsky, and Steve brings with him a very unique set of talents and passions. Uh, he's worked in the marketing departments of two Fortune 500 companies. He's worked for various size ad agencies and creative development, branding, and copywriting roles. So he knows full well how marketing and advertising should work together. His current position is Senior Creative Content Strategist for ResponseSys, which is a leading provider of email and cross-channel marketing solutions. And he's going to tell us more about that as the show progresses, because you'll not just want to know about him, you'll want to know about ResponseSys. But let me continue about Steve, because he's a really, really special person. And it's important maybe to point out here that the way Steve and I got together was because of his blogging. He came to my attention. There's a lot of bloggers out there. Um, most uh, who who continue to, to bubble to the top of the pile, you know, are good, they're consistent, but I'm going to tell you folks, Steve is extraordinary. I have never read a blog post of his that wasn't well-researched, well-documented, uh, very poignant, very thought-provoking, and just fun and interesting to read. So I want you to put him on your list. Um, he is, without question, a social media evangelist, which, of course, is why I love him. He is an expert blogger and highly influential in this space. He has been named one of the top 100 influencers in social media by Social Technology Review and a top 50 social media blogger by Cred. He's written for Forbes, Ad Age, Business Insider, Business to Community, Social Media Today, Brand Magazine, Branding Magazine, and I could go on, but we'd spend the rest of the show talking about that. So for the moment, let's jump right into the interview. Steve Olinsky, welcome back to the LinkedIn Lady Show. So glad you're here. Carol, I can't believe it's been this long. Um, time well, you've been too busy, man. I know, I know. Time just flies by, and I look up, and it's like, man, I can't believe it's been that long since I was on the show. So it is, it is long overdue, and as always, it's totally my honor to be here. Well, it, it, it's a mutual admiration society. So um, first thing I want you to do is please correct me because I think I mispronounced the name of the company you're working for. So why don't we start there? Why don't you tell us what you're doing right now so our listeners yeah, it's, know? It's, it's, it's pronounced responses. Um, 
And it's spelled just like you would think the word responses is spelled, except it ends in S-Y-S. So it's R-E-S-P-O-N-S-Y-S. So uh, instead of no E-S, it's a Y-S. Yeah, What's very that? clever. Yeah, exactly. The, the uh, website's responses.com. And like you mentioned, what we do, um, we're a leading provider of email and, and cross-channel marketing solutions. Um, we help companies engage in relationship marketing across all the interactive channels. Uh, and interactive, of course, is obviously here to stay. And relationship marketing is really at the root uh, of everything we do um, because nowadays you have to not only establish the initial relationship, you need to maintain a relationship with that customer for the life, uh, for the whole entire life cycle. And we do it really well across all the interactive channels. Um, and I've been there since October of last year. And you mentioned my title is uh, Senior Creative Content Strategist, which sounds wordy. Um, so I do a lot of uh, content marketing, uh, idea, ideation, uh, brainstorming uh, for our various clients uh, regarding their online content. And I'm also getting heavily involved with the company itself in terms of the blog, which we just relaunched, and serving as the editor of that. Um, so that's that's been going great as well. And I'm continuing to write uh, for all the publications I write for, the Forbes and, and Business Insider and Ad Age and things along those lines. So it's really been great. I work from home uh, in Philadelphia. Um, Responses is very much a global company with offices literally around the country and the world. So, so far, it's been amazing. I work with an amazing group of people, um, including our, our director of creative services, Wakara Yeomans, who um, is just an amazing person. And real quick story, how I came to work uh, for Responses is really an example of uh, content marketing um, on a personal level. Uh, I was laid off from my job about a, a little over a year ago in January of 2012, and I continued, of course, to keep writing. And when I got laid off, I changed uh, my byline to say, you know, I'm looking for a full-time job. And within, I would say, a month, a gentleman by the name of Ed Henrich, who's a senior vice president at Responses, saw something I wrote, saw my byline, and really the rest is history. And it's just been an amazing experience. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm thrilled to death to work with, work with such a great company and a great group of people. And I thank you for sharing that story. And, and I, I got to piggyback on that because I, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, boot camps, social media boot camps, work obviously heavily in the LinkedIn space trying to help people craft their positioning and their biography. Um, and often the attendees are people who themselves are in the job market. And I find they want to hide that fact. Well, you know, should I say I'm a consultant? Should I say, you know, I'm looking for a job? Should I leave my old title up there? And I say, no, put it out there. Put that message out there in the universe. Universe, you don't have to sound needy. You can sound like the, you know, position yourself as the next and most important person that company wants. And uh, so uh, bravo to you for putting it out there because obviously it paid big dividends for you. So I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled for you personally, and I'm sure they're thrilled to have you. Well, so um, let's start with um, uh, a couple of different things I wanted to talk to you about today. I want to start with this. You mentioned content. I want to talk about personal content marketing. Do you think personal branding and content marketing are important? And if so, why? I think our listeners really need to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's a great question, Carol. And I absolutely do. I, I really can't overstate um, just how vital I think it is um, for everybody. Um, I think a lot of people still don't realize that we are all our own personal brand, um, especially in this world. And, and what I mean by that is the digital world that we live in. Um, everything we do um, is online, essentially. And whether we choose to believe it or like it or not, um, our personal brands are really often public record, for, you know, in, in no uncertain terms. I'm sure you would agree with that. Oh, my God, yes. That everything we do. So from a personal brand perspective, I cannot, like I said, overstate that, how important it is um, that everybody needs to realize, you know, and it goes way beyond, you know, you hear stories of, the people who post pictures to Facebook, um, you know, a lot of times it's younger, you know, just out of college or in college, and then they go for jobs and they and they kind of realize too late that these, you know, not so flattering pictures are appearing on Facebook. 
these are the kinds of things that everybody needs to be cognizant of um, that when they're in the real world, you know, the working world, that they are their own brand. And they are also, you know, really uh, an ambassador of the brand for the company they work for. And I think it's a, a very much overlooked by a lot of people um, that that's the case. And then you mentioned content marketing, and, and obviously I think that's extremely important as well. A lot of times they go, they overlap, like I mentioned before about my story of personal content marketing, but just content marketing in general, of course, that's the big buzz phrase. And you know, Kyle, as well as I do, there's always a new buzz phrase to come along to replace the, the next one. Um, and content marketing is still pretty hot right now, like social media was a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and content marketing, to me, uh, and I've written about this, is really nothing new per se. It's just we put a new name on it. It's basically doing the same thing, at least how I think it should have been done all along in terms of generating and producing the right content to the right people at the right time um, in the right way. <laughs> so God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. So that's, you know, that to me, content marketing is nothing new per se. It's just you know, we put a new name on it. Yeah. And I think if anything has evolved and changed with content marketing, the blend of the written word with the audio, with the video, uh, you know, is are multiple ways of putting your content out there. I think that, you know, obviously the, the platforms to get our content out there has changed, but the fact of the matter is, is that you're right. Uh, this is not new news. This is, this is actually very old news, but I also love the, the fact that you blended this concept of personal marketing with content marketing. And, and you didn't say this, but what I, heard between the lines was before you ever get to content marketing for your brand or your business, you really want to work on and secure your personal brand because whether you're working for yourself or for somebody else, your point is so well taken that that's the footprint and that's the message that you're putting out there about who you are, uh, what you are, what you believe in, you know, what people can trust and whether or not this is a person they might want to uh, follow, pay attention to, or ultimately do business with. And I, I mean, that's one of the reasons that, you know, LinkedIn became my sweet spot because it's, it is the perfect place to really craft your personal biography uh, in addition to other locations, but it's, it's certainly one of the go-to places. So I'm looking at the clock here, Steve. We're going to go to our first commercial break, but when we come back, I want to ask you how you've gone about building your, your personal brand because I think that's a few messages. From Hawaii to the East Coast, she knows how to get the most out of social media. It's the LinkedIn Lady, Carol McManus, and this is the LinkedIn Lady Show on the Rockstar Radio Network. And we'll be back with more right after these. Mobile is the future, and the future is now. Listen in each week, Tuesdays, 4 to 5 Central, to Brilliant Mobile Marketing with your host, Mobile Mary, as we simplify the hottest marketing channel, Mobile Marketing, and share secrets on how you can use mobile to be more brilliant, be more profitable, and have more fun in your industry. Join us each week to learn from brilliant business leaders on how to simply and easily capture a list of raving fans and turn them into loyal customers. This show will help business owners, authors, and speakers realize their own brilliance by tapping into the insights of fellow brilliant business leaders. We will also showcase brilliant tools, both traditional and digital, that will make you more brilliant in everything you do. Don't miss your date with Brilliant Mobile Marketing and your host, Mobile Mary, America's mobile marketing expert, as she shares her success strategies every Tuesday from 4 to 5 Central on the Rockstar Radio Network. Get the competitive edge and take your success to the next level with the Gold Medal Success Show and your host, Forrest Fisher, six-time U.S. National Gold Medalist. Tune in every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Central, 6 Pacific, here on the Rockstar Radio Network as Forrest gives you access into the mindset of true champions and helps you apply these success principles to your life and business for immediate results. Each show will feature guest athletes and business experts who have achieved tremendous success and are ready to share their their stories of struggle, glory, tragedy, and triumph, revealing tips and strategies Forrest and these guest experts use to propel themselves to world-class success. Many people live their whole lives wanting more. The Gold Medal Success Show will demonstrate that anyone can have a more fulfilling and satisfying life when they put a few basic principles into play. Make every day 
Game Day with the Gold Medal Success Show each Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Central here on the Rockstar Radio Network. Welcome back to the LinkedIn Lady Show. Here is where you find out what social media can do for you and your business. Now, as trends change and new applications become available, the LinkedIn Lady Show will bring that information to you in an easy-to-understand, fun, and engaging way. Join us now as the LinkedIn Lady continues to show us the way. Now, let's get back to your host, Carol McManus. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the LinkedIn Lady Show. Here today with none other than Mr. Steve Olinsky, blogger extraordinaire. Uh, and we just before break, we're talking about this whole concept of personal marketing and content marketing. But Steve, I would really love for you to share with our listeners uh, some of the ways that you built your personal brand, because I think some of those tips, you know, are, I believe, things that people can replicate for themselves. So tell us your journey of personal branding. Sure, Carol. I'd be happy to. Um, the, way I, the way I usually start the story off is if someone asks me this is um, by basically saying, I wish I was uh, smart uh, and say I was a visionary and, and saw the future four, five, six, seven years ago when, when social was breaking and blogging and all that, but I'm nowhere near that smart. Um, I literally just got caught up in it like, like a, lot, a lot of other people, um, and it just uh, you know resonated with me from day one. Um, the one thing I did that I'm now looking back, extremely happy I did, was I started my own blog um, really early in the process. Um, found, uh, you know, Blogger. Um, back then it was probably either them or WordPress um, as, a, as a platform. And I just started to write um, because I'm a writer. And, you know, you need to, writers write. And I needed to get things out of my head and put pen to paper, as it were. So I started to write. Um, and then one day... Uh, I literally was reading uh, an edition of Ad Age. Um, I don't remember if it was the digital version or printed version, but I decided to email the editor uh, inquiring to see if I could uh, write a, an article, contribute to the, to the publication. Now, I knew my, my odds were extremely long because they figured they'd probably get thousands of, of requests a day, literally, of people wanting to write for such a well-known publication, but I figured, what the heck, it's, it's only going to cost me the, the time to write an email. So I sent off an email uh, to the editor, and I didn't write it. Um, I purposely didn't write it you know, the way I figured other people would write it. Um, it was very tongue-in-cheek, uh, a lot of self-deprecating humor. That's, that's my style anyway. Right. As, as you well know. I do. And uh, within 30 minutes, I got an email back saying, hey, Steve, you know, loved your email. Um, what do you want to write about? And from there, I just pitched a couple ideas, and and I don't know, maybe two weeks later, I was in the printed version and and on the online version, and it kind of went from there. And then from there, you know, once one door opens, um, a lot of other doors open a lot easier. And I basically, you know, kept going and reached out to other sites that I was interested in writing for, and that led me to Forbes eventually, um, where... I basically, and now a, a featured blogger um, on their on their CMO network, um, which is is a tremendous honor to write for such a uh, a well known uh, publication as Forbes, and that's how I that's how it started. It literally just started one day sitting in my office. I'm saying, "What the heck? It's only going to take me, uh, you know, an email. They, the most they can do is say no." Uh, now, obviously, I, I had to produce the content. Um, and the content they liked, um, and that would be of interest to their readers. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to sugarcoat that and gloss over that. You know that minor part of it. You know, wink, wink. But um, to get my foot in the door uh, was really the, the first step. Um, get into ad age, and that's well. That's, and if I can, if I can add my own observation from my side of the desk, you know, knowing you and having followed your blogs for a long time now, I, I think there's a couple of things. Number one, your voice is very distinctive, uh, and you're right. You do write with that that tongue in cheek, self deprecating humor, which again makes it fun to read. It's not just another boring article. The other thing that I really treasure about your writing, and I want to ask you about the amount of research that you do when you're writing a post, because some bloggers just spout off just to hear themselves talk and like you know with no real purpose other than opinion 
um, you don't do that. Uh, at least that's not my perception. My perception is that you put a lot of thought in your blog posts with the idea that your your goal is to really give the reader something that is worthwhile and uh, maybe something they didn't know or need to know and um, and that has been well thought out and well documented. So what is your process when you when you write now? Is it as detailed as I think it is? <laughs> well, what's let me see. I go into my laboratory and <laughs> <laughs> my secret, you know, made scientist. No, no, no. It's it's every every writer I know, you know, has their own uh, method of operation. You know, mine is, you know, I'll find something of interest, whether it's a research study, a survey, or even just something that kind of catches my eye that I think, based upon my experience and knowledge, that my readers would want to know about. Um, but you're you're so right in, in so much as I don't just – I'm not just writing and sharing news. I'm putting my spin on it and my my take on it and why I think it's important um, and why – you know, what you can get from this from a marketing, advertising, branding perspective. It's, it's, which, which is the other observation that I would make also is that you were very uh, strategic and very smart about how you carved out your niche. The other thing that I see a lot of people do in cyberspace is they try to offer opinions and write blog posts on everything and anything, sort of whatever yeah. pops into their mind. I, I would call it the Twitter mentality, yeah. uh, you know, tweeting out whatever just is top of mind or happening at that moment. You don't do that. You have very, very clearly you know, carved your niche, and admittedly, it's a big niche, but I see you in the advertising, marketing, branding, and social media space, and, yeah, and that's, that's, you're my go-to guy in those areas. Well, well thank you for that, and, and I, that's an absolute um, wonderful comment, compliment, believe me. Um, and you're right, I did, you know, that's when people ask, what do you write about, and I, I list those four mediums, and I know it's, it's a wide scope, but that's what interests me, and that's what I'm, that's my experience, and that's my knowledge, so you're right. I do see other other bloggers who try to you know be everything to everybody, um, and you, you just can't do it. And the other thing I want to make sure I get across is, and I've I've had this conversation with with college age kids, even right up to people who've been doing this for twenty, thirty years, and even when we're relaunching our responses blog um, and talking to prospective bloggers within my own company to say, you got to remember something that the readers don't know what you know. That's why they're reading what you're writing. And what may sound or may seem second nature to you because that's what you do, you have to remember to write it um, at a different level. So put yourself in the shoes of the person on the other end of that line reading, and what are they going to get from this? You may, you may be writing this going, my God, doesn't everybody know this? And, and the basic truth is they don't. Otherwise, why would they read it in the first place? And that's a big hurdle for a lot of people to overcome in terms of blogging, and I, I just went through it again, like I said, with, with my own company, with the responses bloggers, and you can see that light switch go on, literally, you know, through the phone lines as, as I'm having this, you know, training session we just did with our bloggers. So you you got to remember, not everybody knows what you know. If they did, they would not come to our blog, and they would not read what you write. Well, and the interesting point, I, I so agree with you. I mean, I was always taught both as a live trainer and speaker and as a uh, as a writer that you want to write, and I've heard the phrase sixth grade level. I'm not sure if I completely agree with that because that sounds and feels a little condescending, but, but the way you phrased it really, really is good, is you have to understand that you, they are reading you because they are expecting you to give them information that they don't have. So you want to put it across in a way that doesn't embarrass or intimidate. Um, don't use acronyms. Don't use jargon. And if you do, explain it so people you know are comfortable with the jargon that you're using. Um, and uh, and that'll be fine. And for the people who do know what you're talking about, they'll just gloss over it, you know, to get to the really, you know, the, what they feel is the good stuff. Um, right. But it, the honest truth is what you just said is true if you're writing for the New England Journal of Medicine. Even though you think of that as a high-level trade journal, the fact of the matter is, is when you publish in that journal, you're publishing information that other doctors and researchers didn't know before. So it's the, the, the principle applies no matter who you are writing for and what you're writing. So that is really, really good advice. Yeah, really good a, advice. Thank you. But the great point you just made, too, it doesn't matter the audience um, in any in whatever the context is. You have to remember they don't know what you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if you just remember that, that says it all. And you yeah. have to, you know, have to explain it on a, on a level. So a lot of, you know, a lot of my listeners are entrepreneurs and small businesses. And one of the things that I spend a great deal of time with my clients on is, is this blending. And you, you alluded to this earlier, so I want to come back to this. But it's that crossover between the personal brand and the, the, the content or company branding. And I struggle with some people because they say, well, I keep my, my Facebook you know, profile private and what I, what I do with, you know, with my friends and relatives is nobody else's business and I can do whatever I want to there, but this is my company persona. And I says, no, 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 you don't understand. I don't care. First of all, you have no control over those ultimate privacy settings on Facebook. That's just a you know, political comment. Um, but more importantly, there is crossover and who you are as a human being is going to reflect on your business and your, your business is going to reflect on you. So I, w- I would love to, we're going to go to a break, but I want you to start on this answer and then we can finish it when we come back, back about striking this delicate balance between personal branding and building your company brand. So give us a piece of advice before we go to break. Yeah, real fast. I know we got to up against the break. Uh, just to you know, the one piece of advice I would give to people is you got to remember more often than not they're one and the same. Your personal brand, your company's brand. There's a lot of overlap um, that people don't realize is happening even without their knowledge. So everything they do um, is going to be a reflection of not just their personal brand, but also also their company brand. So that's something to keep in mind, um, really, at, at, at every turn. Yeah, I, I mean that that pretty much says it all. You can't separate them. It's the internet, folks. There is no absolute one hundred percent lock that you can put on that information. Once it's out there, once those photos are out there, once that content is out there, once that you know um, rant is out there, there's always the potential that it's going to go viral or that it's going to be posted or reposted or shared, and uh, that can be very devastating to a brand right. um, and and lose you a lot of potential business because people lose confidence in you because the authenticity that you tried to build, I think, for your company brand is damaged by your personal actions, and it's it's and you're right about the youth. Uh, I think the youth coming into the workplace um, are still a little fearless. Uh, they view privacy differently maybe than you and I do, um, and meaning they have no, no, <laughs> no privacy filters whatsoever. And there's a price to pay for that. You can do that. So um, looking at the clock here, we are going to go to our second break. Um, please, real quick, um, so Steve, people can check you out. Where, where's the best place to find you? Uh, my blog is probably the best. It's steveolensky.blogspot.com. Perfect. Okay, and we'll come back and tell you about that again. So go grab a pencil if you missed that. I will highlight it then, that again when we come back. But we're going to move to this topic of advertising and marketing. Stay with us. This is Carol McManus, the LinkedIn lady. We'll be right back. From Hawaii to the East Coast, she knows how to get the most out of social media. It's the LinkedIn Lady, Carol McManus, and this is the LinkedIn Lady Show on the Rockstar Radio Network. And we'll be back with more right after these. There's no stopping us. Join host Kalen Amadio for Act Local, marketing for small business. Kalen helps concerned, confused, and even clueless small business entrepreneurs market simply, safely, and successfully. Join Kalen for some Monday morning marketing madness that will leave you with more ideas, more understanding, and more knowledge about why and how. Harnessing the Internet gives you the power to bring your business to the next level. Whether you need help with online media, social media, video, or mobile marketing for your local business, this marketing black belt will guide you into the 21st century with easy tips, tricks, and techniques that get your local business seen and heard. Each week, Kalen will feature a new tip that you can use today, as well as a range of guest experts who are passionate about helping local business owners thrive at Local Marketing for Small Business airs every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Rockstar Radio Network. 
Mobile is the future, and the future is now. Listen in each week, Tuesdays, 4 to 5 Central, to Brilliant Mobile Marketing with your host, Mobile Mary, as we simplify the hottest marketing channel, Mobile Marketing, and share secrets on how you can use mobile to be more brilliant, be more profitable, and have more fun in your industry. Join us each week to learn from brilliant business leaders on how to simply and easily capture a list of raving fans and turn them into loyal customers. This show will help business owners, authors, and speakers realize their own brilliance by tapping into the insights of fellow brilliant business leaders. We will also showcase brilliant tools, both traditional and digital, that will make you more brilliant in everything you do. Don't miss your date with Brilliant Mobile Marketing and your host, Mobile Mary, America's mobile marketing expert, as she shares her success strategies every Tuesday from 4 to 5 Central on the Rockstar Radio Network. Welcome back to the, to the LinkedIn Lady Show. Here is where you find out what social media can do for you and your business. Now, as trends change and new applications become available, the LinkedIn Lady Show will bring that information to you in an easy-to-understand, fun, and engaging way. Join us now as the LinkedIn Lady continues to show us the way. Now, let's get back to your host, Carol McManus. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the LinkedIn Lady Show. This is Carol McManus. I am here today with Steve Olinsky. And Steve, just before we move on to my other topic that I want to chat with you about today, which happens to be one of your blog posts from, I'm going to say, a couple of weeks ago, but I have to bring it to my listeners. But I want to wrap this whole conversation about personal branding and and content marketing, because I feel passionately that they are not mutually exclusive, that they are so intertwined. Uh, regardless of whether you work for yourself or you work for somebody else. So I would love for you to give whatever other thoughts you have or tips for listeners on how to bridge that gap and and make it seamless. Sure. Um, One of the things I wanted to make sure I got across um, to the listeners was, even though you have your personal brand and your company's brand and they overlap, you still have to have your own, you have to infuse your own personality. Um, you don't have to, or at least this is how I went about it. Um, your personality really has to be of, of the root core of your personal brand, because obviously, you know, you are who you are, first of all. Right. And that's got to come through, um, first and foremost, but you're also, like I said before, you're representing your, your company's brand, your employer's brand, whatever the case may be. So there absolutely can be a happy medium, um, between the two. I don't think you like you. I think you mentioned before that people say they have their, their personal accounts and their company accounts, and never shall the two meet. Um, to me, that that's not the right way to go about it. You have to have that personality, that infusion of your own um, individuality, you know, that kind of thing. And you can still do both, and you can represent your company and have your personal brand across, you know, both those b- crossing lines, if you will. And I take, you know, that very seriously. I'm very cognizant and aware of that in everything I'm doing. Um, and I think that's, sometimes I think people get, that gets lost in the shuffle that, okay, I need to put my company hat on now and I need to be Mr. Corporate, Mr. Button Up, whatever the company brand is. And I don't think that's necessarily the case, especially in today's world where we know one of the key tenants is transparency. And if you're yeah. not, you know, that you know personally it's going to come through yeah it's definitely going to come through and uh just to to sort of amplify that for the listeners because unless you are in the information marketing where your personal brand people don't even know who you are because you're just selling information products or you're selling you know real products through amazon through a back-end you know store um, chances are the majority, the vast majority of my listeners are people that at some point in time are going to interface directly uh, with their customers and clients, either face-to-face or certainly on the phone or, or by direct email. It's not all going to always be virtual. And I think therein lies the, the, the secret to what you just said is if you express yourself even through your content marketing and put your personality into it, then the authenticity just just sings when they meet you because they realize this is the real guy. Steve's the real deal. Yeah, you know, this is who he, what he writes and, and what he puts out there is who he is and what he believes in and how he's going to serve me as a customer. And when you do that, it makes the, the closing of the sale a whole, whole lot easier. 
because right. you don't have to uh, overcome those those hurdles of of everything else, which actually leads to my next subject that I want to go to. I read a blog post of yours a few weeks back. This was in Forbes, um, and a, let me just frame up why I think that this is important to talk about. I don't have to tell you, Steve, that all of the conversation today is about where online advertising is going, especially in the social, social media space, with both um, you know, Google still fighting for advertising dollars, Facebook having to generate advertising and other revenues simply because they are now publicly traded, and now Twitter getting into the game uh, and making it more, to, more affordable for small businesses to advertise where it's pretty much been a you know, big brand uh, market for a while. Uh, this whole concept of advertising versus marketing, which is an age-old, you know, discussion, comes back to play. So, folks, if you're listening, this is, well, obviously you're listening or you wouldn't be hearing my voice. Steve's article was, this just in, a lot of people don't trust advertising. And the subline, subtext was shocking, surprising, astonishing. And with your permission, Steve, I want to read the first paragraph. If you used any or all of these words to describe your reaction to the title of this article, and you are in marketing or advertising, you may want to seriously consider a career change. Now, that was a stunning opening paragraph. I have to let you run with that and tell us, A, why you wrote that, and what the real message is here, because it's an important one. Yeah, it, it, it was the article centered around... Um, some research that a, um, a research firm had done um, regarding advertising. And they, you know, asked a bunch of questions to a bunch of people about what they thought about advertising. Um, and when I looked at the, the results, you know, a, a good chunk of the results, it just seemed so obvious to me, so ridiculously obvious that I, I even questioned why they even did the survey in the first place. Now, I did, I did find um, additional results that were, more telling and more provocative than these. But, I mean, right off the bat, you know, what the, the stuff that jumped off, you know, the page was 76% of respondents said ads in general were either very exaggerated or somewhat exaggerated. Meaning no, they don't believe them, right? Exactly. You know, 87% um, think half or more of the ads that we see for cleaning products are Photoshopped. 96% thought weight loss ads are Photoshopped. It, it, to me, it was just... Well, what did you, what did you think people were going to respond to this? How did you know that was just so so obvious? You know, a lot of eighty one percent said beauty ads are exaggerated. No kidding. You know, like that's that, that was to me it was like, did we really need to have this survey? It just struck me as so over the top obvious. That's why I wrote the opening I did. Like, if you really were surprised by any of these findings, and you're in marketing advertising for more than thirty seconds. You might want to think about doing something else because that's the world you know we we've lived in forever and are, it's always going to be that way. I think consumers are always going to have a jaded eye toward any form of advertising, especially now because they get so inundated with so many different advertisements across so many different channels at all different times of the day. You know, there's just there's just no way that they can't be have at least one eye that's jaded, if not both. So that was kind of the crux of. Why I why I wrote the article I did. Um, now I did mention in the article, and I just mentioned uh, a few seconds ago that there was some in insightful statistics that I gleaned from the same survey. So it was kind of a uh, a mishmash of really obvious stuff to oh that's kind of interesting. I, I want to make sure I touch on that. Sure, please article. do. Yeah, yeah, and and some of the some of the stuff that I thought was really interesting was that it said only three percent had sponsored posts on social media. Encourage them to try a new product. So basically, consumers are saying, "I don't don't waste your money on a sponsored post. It's not going to help. It's not going to help me change my mind. It's not going to sway me. It's not going to influence me to buy your product or service or wear." Is so Mark that was Zuckerberg kind of, listening? <laughs> exactly. That was kind of interesting to say. Such a low number. Again, I wasn't surprised by it, but it was intriguing and it was provocative enough that I wanted to touch on it to say that you know what, save your money. Spend your money somewhere else, Mr. and Mrs. Brand, because we're not buying it when it comes to sponsor posts. And I just want to make sure people heard that number. 3% yeah. say that it would influence them or encourage them to try a new product. That's, right. that's astonishingly low. Exactly. Exactly. But you and I both know that that's probably not going to influence the brands to stop doing it um, for whatever reason. And to me, I, that's fine. Maybe some, maybe some brands are having a positive result uh, on a positive ROI. And if, if they are, God love them. But 
to me, it's certainly it's not money well spent as, as a whole. Um, the other the other one of the other findings I wanted to touch on was the fact that people said humor um, really helps them remember a product. Um, it was around 71 percent um, said a funny ad makes them more likely to remember a product. And I thought that was interesting. I've always been a big proponent of, of humor, as you could probably well imagine, um, and kind of breaking the ice and, and hitting that emotional level with someone through humor, um, done in the right way and tastefully done and all those good things, that it helps people, it helps resonate, it helps connect and engage um, with the viewer. And one of the things that's actually interesting after I wrote this article um, that literally just happened, I just found out about a couple of days ago was Southwest uh, Airlines, um, who you know was um, who did a lot of have done a lot of great ads, a lot of great TV commercials, you know, with the "You're now free to move about the country" those kinds of things, real funny tongue in cheek ads. They just released a new ad um, that's a polar opposite of that. No humor, no no you know tongue in cheek, nothing like that. It's very direct. It's real straightforward. It's done really well, um, but it's a complete opposite of what they've done. And to me, that's really interesting that such a brand, uh, a well-known brand like that, would go in such a complete uh, opposite direction. Now, obviously, Southwest Airlines has a lot of brand equity that a lot of brands would kill for. So it's not necessarily the same, you know, apples to apples. They're not a new brand. But it's going to be interesting to watch to see what kind of reaction uh, the general public has to a brand who's known for, it's almost like a Geico, you know, who does a lot of fun stuff going in the complete opposite direction. Yeah. And well, first of all, the person who started the original, you know, what we know as of the Southwest Airlines branding isn't running things anymore. So I suspect that might have something to do with it. Yep. But that's a dangerous thing for a company to do, not just because of the survey, because humor and lightness has always worked well for that brand. But more importantly, when you make a departure from the brand positioning that you've established, you confuse your audience and, and you're sending now a mixed message, which, you know, may or may not not sway you. I was interested in that same uh, chart that, that you were just referring to, that only 12% uh, you know, in, are influenced by educational, which I yeah. know a lot of people try to hit that hard. But again, that's okay, but you're not going to hit the whole market. 8% sexy. I thought that would be higher, but I was amused by the fact that of those 92% who responded were men. But when you <laughs> dug deeper, the other interesting point was that they remember the sex in the ad. They don't necessarily remember the ad, uh, which, again, doesn't surprise me at all. And then right. you get to, you know, other styles of being too serious or too patriotic, which were in the single digits. Um, so uh, humor works. That's what you're really telling us. And I, I loved the fact that you said appropriate humor uh, right. because humor can, you know, can be very, very misused. So we have a lot more to talk about on this subject. This is, this is important because this is something that as people are crafting their brand for their companies and themselves, uh, you want to take this into account so that you can um, position yourself the way you want to be perceived and, and, uh, come across to those potential clients. So we're coming into our last break here. Uh, this is the LinkedIn Lady Show. You're listening to Carol McManus and myself and Steve Olinsky. We'll be right back after these messages. From Hawaii to the East Coast, she knows how to get the most out of social media. It's the LinkedIn Lady, Carol McManus, and this is the LinkedIn Lady Show on the Rockstar Radio Network. And we'll be back with more right after these. Mobile is the future, and the future is now. Listen in each week, Tuesdays, 4 to 5 Central, to Brilliant Mobile Marketing with your host, Mobile Mary, as we simplify the hottest marketing channel, Mobile Marketing, and share secrets on how you can use mobile to be more brilliant, be more profitable, and have more fun in your industry. Join us each week to learn from brilliant business leaders on how to simply and easily capture a list of raving fans and turn them into loyal customers. This show will help business owners, authors, and speakers realize their own brilliance by tapping into the insights of fellow brilliant business leaders. We will also showcase brilliant tools, both traditional and digital, that will make you more brilliant in everything you do. 
Don't miss your date with brilliant mobile marketing and your host, Mobile Mary, America's mobile marketing expert, as she shares her success strategies every Tuesday from 4 to 5 Central on the Rockstar Radio Network. And there's no stopping us. Join host Kaylin Amadio for Act Local, marketing for small business. Kaylin helps concerned, confused, and even clueless small business entrepreneurs market simply, safely, and successfully. Join Kaylin for some Monday morning marketing madness that will leave you with more ideas, more understanding, and more knowledge about why and how harnessing the Internet gives you the power to bring your business to the next level. Whether you need help with online media, social media, video, or mobile marketing for your local business, this marketing black belt will guide you into the 21st century with easy tips, tricks, and techniques that get your local business seen and heard. Each week, Kaylin will feature a new tip that you can use today, as well as a range of guest experts who are passionate about helping local business owners thrive. Act Local Marketing for Small Business airs every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Eastern Standard Time on the Rockstar Radio Network. Welcome back to the LinkedIn Lady Show. Here is where you find out what social media can do for you and your business. Now, as trends change and new applications become available, the LinkedIn Lady Show will bring that information to you in an easy-to-understand, fun, and engaging way. Join us now as the LinkedIn Lady continues to show us the way. Now, let's get back to your host, Carol McManus. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the LinkedIn Lady Show for the last segment of our show today, here today with Steve Olinsky. Right now, we're talking about this whole concept of advertising what works, what doesn't, and what the real numbers are showing us, which I got to tell you, you know, Steve, I've been in this space for a lot of years, as you have, and the the trust in advertising uh, has never been extraordinarily high. There was always a little bit of skepticism, but to, in my mind's eye, it really seems like it's reaching an all-time low, um, and th- there really were some, some shocking things that come out of it. Um, so what else did you research or would you like to share with the listeners in terms of let's let's continue with this thread of what that survey showed and then we can maybe talk about the so what's the solution here what do we do do about it sure there like i said there was um in addition to the incredibly obvious results there were some stuff that was pretty telling um and we touched on that um during the last segment and there's some more that i want to make sure we we talk about um first off one of, there's a there's a stat in in the survey that says um, only 21 percent of people thought the ads that they see are somewhat accurate. That the word somewhat was was pretty telling to me. That was kind of like they're not even sure if it's accurate, and it's 21 percent who are, who are even saying that, you know. And there's the next stat up from that is 57 percent thought the ads were somewhat exaggerated. 19 percent thought they were very exaggerated. So aggregate, if you roll that those numbers together, it's not. It's not very promising um, that people put a lot of accuracy behind the ads um, that the brands create. So that to me wasn't very surprising, but in, a, in, a, in the same sense it was because of the word somewhat, that that could kind of go either way, that I'm not sure what I'm seeing is accurate. Um, so to put yourself in the minds of a consumer, which is always dangerous, but I'll do it anyway, that word somewhat is such a, you could go either way, you know, that kind of, that kind of word. So it was interesting to see that. Um, another stat that was really interesting was that 38% said they wish the claims in the ads that they, they were more accurate. I'm actually surprised that number wasn't higher, um, who, you know, would say, I, I wish the claims were more accurate. But then I would think the people who said that would want to know, well, how can I know, how can I be sure what I'm seeing is accurate? You know, because consumers aren't for the most part, you know, they're pretty savvy. And like I said before, they get inundated with so many different ads after a while, I think they just kind of gloss over what they're seeing. Um, so obviously the, the need to stand out um, and the ability to stand out is even more prevalent, I think, than any other time in history, to be honest with you. Um, one, more, one more stat I want to I talk about from the, from the survey was 21% refuse to purchase products due to brand advertising. Refuse? Yeah, wow. That, yeah, that's a strong word, exactly. You picked up on the same word that I picked up on. Holy that, mackerel. Yeah, that's, that's a quarter, nearly a quarter of people refuse. So they're, that's basically saying, I don't care what you show me, 
Um, if you show me something that's brand advertising, whatever that word means or phrase means, I'm not going to buy what, you, what you're telling me, what you're showing me, regardless of how good it is, regardless if it's on sale. Um, that's really, really telling um, that that many people would, would actually come out and say they refuse to buy anything based on brand advertising. Well, conversely, though, I mean, there is a little bit of good hope here because there were 31% who said they prefer to purchase through brand advertising. So there's still a third of the people out there, which obviously supports and documents why companies, particularly large brands, continue to advertise. Right. But um, I I, I have an idea of where I want to take this conversation, but I I want to wrap up your article with with, uh, something that really caught my eye, The, the, the three reasons consumers... Uh, try new products based on ads. I thought this was interesting. The first one I noticed was simply because they recognize the brand. It could be something their mother, and it doesn't really tell you why, but it could be something that their mother used. You know, I use Tide detergent. Well, guess what? My mother did too. So right. maybe it's just that under, you know, that uh, unconscious. It's it's a good brand because my mom used it, so I'll keep using it. Right. Uh, the in store promotion was interesting, which that one makes sense to me because you it's there, it's at the end of the aisle, it's got a special price tag on it, and you say, "Sure, I'll try it." Um, and then the other was going back to something you said earlier about they had a reaction to the ad. They laughed, they shared it, they talked about it, so it becomes part of the conversation, and therefore you're you're more compelled to make a purchasing decision. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt, but the no, no, no please. The intru- the the first one where it's it's a brand that you recognize. To me, that kind of jumped out to say, well, if you're if you're a new brand, um, you're you're you know you're fighting an uphill battle um, because of brand recognition other brands have. So that obviously it it, it makes it even harder to to get noticed and then get get that trust um, because of brand recognition that all these other brands because of they have they've had a head start on, on you. Um, the other thing too that was interesting was like you mentioned they had a reaction to the ad you know and the first thing mentioned in, in the survey was that they laughed and that goes back to what we talked about humor and it kind of again to me it just it kind of breaks the ice like I mentioned it just you lower your guard kind of thing you you get comfortable um, through humor and you're not maybe as cynical if you will towards towards an ad or towards a brand um, if you make me laugh if you make them laugh. Um, so juxtaposing that, where we talked about earlier with Southwest, it's going to be really interesting to see um, what happens with that brand and how people respond to that. Yeah, I'm not often one to pull out my crystal ball, but I'm going to suggest to you that I think that new campaign is going to fail because it is such a departure from what people know and love about that brand and relate to about that brand. But we'll see. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I was wrong at least once in my life, maybe <laughs> twice. Um, so here's my thought, and here's where I think it would be an interesting way to sort of you know, move this whole conversation. Because to me, Steve, while this could sound like bad news, and as you say, there could be marketers and advertisers who are above the third floor who are opening the windows right now, ready to jump out. And that's not what we're suggesting. Advertising is not going to go away. It's still going to have a place. But it clearly is a shifting place. It's a changing place because consumer awareness and consumer conversation has changed. Um, so um, my, my thinking is here is all of this is an opportunity to use social media and blogging platforms and website conversations and all, you know whatever it is, whatever other digital tools, e-newsletters, all of those kinds of things, to create that two-way conversation with people so that your consumer becomes your advertising voice and the advocate, because that is, in fact, what this survey doesn't say, but we know from other surveys, that's what the consumer does respond to, is the peer recommendations of, of the restaurant they liked, the product that they liked, the, um, the service that they got, you know, and the list goes on and on. So what do you see as, as the opportunities for people to take this information and say, how do I shift my efforts to, quote unquote, sell my product or my service without the traditional advertising getting in the way? Well, that's, it's a great question. Um, obviously, they have to, again, I say obvious, but again, I'm, I'm falling into my own same trap as so people don't know um, everything that I know, per se, and what other people in, in my um, industry know is it, it's got to be that, that establishing of trust uh, first and foremost. Um, the the transparency. Um, consumers, I think, are just getting more and more cynical. Um, and when you create that 
campaign that goes across all the different channels, it's got to be integrated. The message has to say the same thing um, and be consistent throughout all the different mediums and all the different messaging. A lot of times that doesn't happen. Um, you may see something on social media from a brand that's different than what they see in a printed ad. So there's a, there's that there's that need to break down the silos internally um, that's probably going to continue for the foreseeable future that really has to happen between that integration of traditional and digital media and digital advertising and digital marketing and traditional and those kinds of things between sales and marketing and marketing and advertising. There really has to be that cohesive, uh, conscious uh, approach um, to presenting the same um, consistent message across all the different mediums. Yeah, that that's also true. And I would add a third element to that, and that's the fact that if, especially for larger companies it, where you have multiple layers and many people between you and the customer, uh, what sales and marketing does has to be followed through right down to that person who is on the phone with your customer, face-to-face with your customer, who doesn't control those lofty messages or doesn't manage the social media, but uh, is putting out an image. And then if what the customer experiences is inconsistent with that, that's that's bad. So this actually brings me back to, to what I really wanted you to talk a little little bit more about because I really want our listeners to know about responses and the, the because the email and cross-channel marketing is part of what we're talking about today. This is to me one of the opportunities of blending email and mobile and social and the web and display and all these kinds of things. So tell us about some of the customers that responses uh, services or anything else that we would know that would be useful to my uh, listeners. Absolutely. We responses serves um, brands really across the whole world. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, including um, LinkedIn, ironically, uh-huh. uh, um, Lego, which is just an amazing brand, um, Orbitz, United Airlines, Dollar Thrifty, Qantas, uh, Avis, United Healthcare, There's and, and on and on. Uh, that's just a random, I mean, a quick sampling uh, of, the, of the clients um, that we work on, um, Harley-Davidson, Verizon Wireless. I'm thinking of more. Um, it's just an incredible array uh, of a very diverse group uh, of, uh, of clients that, that we work on um, and to help them through across all the interactive channels, um, email, display, mobile, you name it, um, we do it. Um, so it's, it's a really diverse company uh, in terms of the client base. And like I mentioned <clears throat> at the top of the show, it's, it's a worldwide global company with truly um, just an incredible array of talented people. That's wonderful. Well, and I appreciate you sharing that. So folks, pay attention to those companies because you'll see examples of exactly what Steve's been talking about today. So Steve, again, give us your blog site again so people can find you personally. Sure. It's Steve Olensky, and I'll spell my last name. It's O-L-E-N-S-K-I. So steveolensky.blogspot.com. Easy to find, easy to find, easy peasy. Well, my friend, uh, as always, you are just, uh, you're a national treasure to me. I so deeply appreciate you giving the time uh, to be with me and to share your great expertise and your knowledge and your and your humor with my listeners. Uh, I love you to death. And let's not make it so long before no. you come back again. No, right back uh, to Thanks. Right. Oh, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. So listen, folks, we are coming up on the weekend here. Um, we have, as always, you can imagine, lots of things to talk about next week. So I'm going to close today's show as I always close, wishing you quality connections and natural networking. You have a great day and a great weekend. And I'll be back with you on Monday. Thank you for being a part of the LinkedIn Lady Show here on the Rockstar Radio Network with Carol McManus. Join us every weekday for the LinkedIn Lady Show in each show.